Hey guys, in this video I will be taking a look at Ubuntu Studio. Um, as far as I am aware, Ubuntu Studio doesn't use a GUI for the actual installation part. So we have this um, sort of graphical, um, no, I mean command prompt, you know, style installation process. So English. Okay, install Ubuntu Studio. Okay, so English, English, um, and I am in Australia. Okay, configure the keyboard. You can try to have your keyboard layout detected by pressing a series of keys. If you do not want to do this, you will be able to select your keyboard layout from a list. Detect keyboard layout. I'm going to select no and USA, uh, USA. If you are in any um, English, you know, speaking country, then USA is usually a safe bet. You know, if you're in the UK or Australia, it should be fine. Okay, now what is it doing now? I'll just pause the video for a second. Okay, so it is scanning the CD-ROM, loading additional components. Okay, now that's done. It's detecting the network hardware. Configuring the network with DHCP. It actually tells you what it is doing. Please enter the host name for this system. The host name is a single word that identifies your system to the network. If you don't know what your host name should be, consult your network administrator. If you're setting up your own home network, you can make something up here. Yeah, I'm happy with it being um, Ubuntu. So let me just get focus in here. Continue. Setting up the clock. Getting the time from a network time server. Okay, configure the clock based on your present physical location. Your time zone is Australia slash Queensland. If this is not correct, you may select from a full list of time zones instead. Is this time zone correct? Um, Yes, it is correct in my case. Detecting disks and all other hardware. Starting up the partitioner. Okay, partition disks. The installer can guide you through partitioning a disk using different standard schemes or if you prefer, you can do it manually with guided partitioning. You will still have a chance later to review and customize the results. If you choose guided partitioning for an entire disk, you will next be asked which disk should be used. Okay, since this is a VirtualBox machine, I'm going to select guided use entire disk. Though obviously if you, for whatever reason, choose to dull boot with Ubuntu Studio, you will have to go down to manual. Note that all data on the disk you select will be erased, but not before you have confirmed that you really want to make the changes. Select Disk to Partition. Uh, the VirtualBox only has access to an 8.6 GB VBox hard disk, which I am going to select. OK, if you continue, the changes listed below will be written to the disks. Otherwise, you will be able to make further changes manually. The partition tables of the following devices are changed. Uh, yeah, that is OK. Write the changes to the disks. You have to um, go across to yes. And it's now formatting the disk, or the hard disk, I should say. Installing the base system. The base system has um, now almost installed. That took a good 10, uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Um, so set up users and passwords. The user account will be created for you to use instead of the root account for non-administrative activities. Please enter the real name of this user. This information will be used for instance as default origin for emails sent by this user as well as any program which displays or uses the user's real name. Your full name is a reasonable choice. Full name for the new user. Okay. Mark. 
Okay, continue. Select a username for the new account. Your first name is the reasonable choice. The username should start with a lowercase letter which can be followed by any combination of numbers and lowercase letters. Yep, I'm happy with that. Continue. Set up users and passwords. A good password will contain a mixture of letters, numbers and punctuation and should be changed at regular intervals. Choose the password for the new user. Okay, that should be secure. Continue. Please enter the same user password again to verify you have typed it correctly. Continue. Uh, you may configure your home directory for encryption such that any files stored there remain private even if your computer is stolen. The system will seamlessly mount your encrypted home directory each time you log in and automatically unmount when you log out of all active sessions. Um, I am not going to encrypt my home directory in case my computer ever crashes and I need to get data off my hard drive even though this is just a demonstration in a virtual box so that's why I would never encrypt mine um, if you need to use the HTTP proxy to access the outside world enter the proxy information here otherwise leave this blank okay continue configuring apt okay so the downloading files I've got a feeling it's downloading files it might be updating the repositories, might be getting a few updates. Okay. Yeah, it looks to be downloading. I'm going to click cancel. I think it's downloading. Yep, it is. So I have clicked cancel. Select and install the software. Software selection. At the moment, only the core of the system is installed. To tune the system to your needs, you can choose to install one or more of the following predefined collections of software. Choose software to install 2D slash 3D creation and editing, um, audio recording and editing, LAD, SPA, LV2, DSSI audio plugins, tone generation and editing, video creation and editing. Okay, so I'm just going to install the lot, even though it's obviously going to take longer. Configuring JackD2. If you want to run JackD with real time priorities, the user starting JackD needs real time permissions. Accept this option to create the file, etc. Security limits at D forward slash audio dot conf. Granting real time priority and memlock privileges to the audio group. Running JackD with real time priority minimizes latency but may lead to complete system lockups by requesting audio available physical system memory, which is unacceptable in multi user environments. Enable real time process priority. Um, if you are like me and um, you have no idea what they are talking about, or if um, you have um, you know a low amount of system resources, like only 2 gig of RAM or something then leave the default option no okay so about 40 minutes later um, it has almost finished installing the software it has taken a very long time probably because I chose to install all of the different um, components um, though oh yeah, it's definitely um, you know, it's definitely um, taken more time to install than any other Linux distribution I've ever used. In total, um, I would say we are around the 60 to 70 minute mark. However, if you obviously um, select to install less components, then it should be a bit quicker. And I also didn't install any of the updates. So if you, um, you know, if you want to, you know, fully install and update um, Ubuntu Studio, you know, be prepared to put, you know, about two hours of your time aside. Or, or you know, with a lot of it, you can obviously go about doing other things whilst it installs, though it is definitely going to take quite a while to do. So, yep. 
something seems to be happening now, maybe it will reboot. Okay, so now it is installing the Grub bootloader. This shouldn't take very long. Configuring Grub PC. It seems that this new installation is the only operating system on this computer. If so, it should be safe to install the Grub bootloader to the master boot record of your first hard, di um, hard drive. Warning, if the installer failed to detect another operating system that is present on your computer, modifying the master boot record will make that operating system temporarily unbootable, through, uh, though Grub can be manually configured later to boot it. Install the Grub bootloader to the master boot record. Um, this obviously depends on what you're doing, though if you are like me and uh, playing around with it in VirtualBox, click yes. Though if for whatever reason you were dull booting, then um, you might want to click no. And it is now um, finishing the installation, setting users and passwords, clock settings. System clocks are generally set to Coordinated Universal, universal Time, UTC. The operating system uses your time zone to convert system time into local time. This is recommended unless you also use another operating system that expects the clock to be set to local time. Is the system clock set to UTC? I am not sure that since it's a virtual box I think that it will be so I am selecting yes. Installation complete. The installation is complete so it is time to boot into your new system. Make sure to remove the installation media CD1, CD1 floppy so that you boot into the new system rather than restarting the installation. Okay so since I am in a virtual machine, okay I'm going to click continue. So devices and I'm going to unmount the ISO image and it's now obviously restarting the VirtualBox machine. Okay and now um, oh, you would have just quickly seen um, the um, boot icon. I'm just going to resize this so it fits in. Okay, so now I need to log in, enter my password. Okay, so it isn't automatically um, resizing. Okay, it has a very nice, um, you know, startup sound. Though um, I've resized my virtual box window, though it hasn't um, resized, which is really annoying. Um, so I'm going to try installing guest editions, and hopefully that fixes this issue. Otherwise, I'll be stuck with this size for the rest of the video, most likely. Um, what to do? Sorry about that, I um, changed um, the resolution um, from you know 124 to one of the lower resolutions. Um, so now let's take a look at Ubuntu Studio 11.4. So you know I quite like the default you know desktop wallpaper, it's pretty nice. Um, the startup sound was pretty good if you heard it, I think you would have heard it. So now let's take a look at the main menu. Um, accessories, you know, all the you know, usual stuff, calculator, character map, disk usage, help, search, screenshot, terminal, text editor. For graphics we have Blender, full screen and window. This is um, you know, a very popular open source um, 3D modeling program, which I'm sure you've probably heard of if you're watching this video. Uh, GIMP image editor, that's pretty standard with um, most distributions. Inkscape vector graphics editor. Uh, Shotwell Photo Manager, Xane Image Scanning Program. I'm just going to open up Blender and take a quick look at it in case you haven't seen Blender before. And you know, I'm not sure if I quite like um, the theme they have by default. It's sort of like just circles, though I presume that's clothes. Yep, I don't like that theme by default or it's just the button part, I don't like that much. Internet, we have Gribber and we have Firefox 4, I think it is safe to presume. 
when it wants to load this virtual machine has um, 2 gig of RAM so um, you know if um, your system has you know 4 or 6 or 8 gig of bytes of RAM or whatever hopefully it's faster installing for you so yep about Firefox yep it's um, Firefox 4 um, I quite like the I, I don't mind the theme they've given Firefox apart from those buttons So yeah, you know, um, you can obviously change the theme or download new themes, etc. And last I was, um, you know, waiting, you know, for the installation to finish, which was 70 minutes. I was just watching the news. Obviously, Osama bin Laden's dead now. Just close tabs. What else do we have here? Office, dictionary, it doesn't come with open office or libre office, yet it comes with a dictionary application. I suppose if you were, you know, doing, you know, graphics, you need to know how to spell. Okay, audio production. Wow, there are quite a few tools here. Oh, I don't know where to start. I'm not really going to go through all of them. There's no point me, you know, talking about and looking at applications that I am not familiar with. So as you can see, this is why it must have um, taken so long to install. There's just a lot of applications, a lot of audio applications, video production, open shop video editor, uh, subtitle editor, Xjadio, a simple video player that gets synced from Jack Transport. Let's take a quick look at open shop video editor. I'm interested to see what this is like. Um, the only um, Linux video um, editing software I've played with is um, Caden Live. Um, oh yeah, it looks pretty nice. I obviously don't have any um, video files to edit. I'll close that. Uh, you know, we have the Ubuntu Software Center, but it doesn't really change um, in any of the Ubuntu distributions from what I can tell. Uh, update Manager has just decided to open. There are a few more updates that need to be installed. I'm not going to worry about them. So yeah, the Ubuntu Software Center pretty much looks the same. It's got a bit of a different background though. Um, places, you know, home folder, desktop, computer, your disk drive, all the networking, search for files, recent documents, system. We have all of, you know, the preferences and administration, help and support, about GNOME. This obviously looks to be GNOME 2, 2.32.1. I'm not sure whether or not um, Ubuntu Studio, um, I'm not sure if the Ubuntu Studio team would want to upgrade to, Ubuntu, um, to GNOME 3 or not. Um, we will just have to wait and see, maybe in Ubuntu Studio 10.10. They might do so, you never know. About Ubuntu. Okay, it just opens up, um, you know, the sort of help screen about Ubuntu. So, yeah, there's not much else I can show you, I don't think. Um, you know, if you're familiar with Ubuntu, then you're going to, you know, be familiar with Ubuntu Studio. It's just got a different theme by default, different software packages. So, you know, all the important stuff like, you know, the system settings, etc. They are pretty much going to be almost identical. So, yeah, I'm not sure if there is anything else I can really show you. And thanks for watching.